Welcome students. Today, now we'll study how we can use or we should use infinitive and gerunds. There's a lot of confusion in it. Some verbs take gerund after them and then, are, then there are some other verbs that take infinitive after them and some verbs take both infinitive or gerund and in some verbs we find that there is the pattern of the sentence is different that means subject verb then indirect object and direct object that in verbs with two objects some of the verbs necessarily take the indirect object after the verb and then the direct object in these kind of sentences the direct object in the place of direct object we place the infinitive so in books you find three kinds of lists given in every book. To treat all these lists and give examples will make a very long video. And as you should also do something on your own, that is, that is how you will actually learn. The best way for it to learn is use a usage dictionary usage dictionary gives you a sentence a pattern how a particular word is used now i recommend that dictionaries like elementary english grammar for the primary classes or say up to 8th class and then A.S. Hornby's Advanced Learner's Dictionary for students or learners, beginners who happen to use dictionary or are in the habit to use dictionary. Then here one more point I'll have to point out is that ascertaining or knowing the meaning of a word without its context is useless. If you cannot use that word correctly, that means it's no use for it. For that, I see students cramming the meanings of the words in Hindi or in English, but they actually don't know how to make sentences with those words. And if you can't make sentences with those words, which you really know the meaning of, you are not learning at all. And so far as direct method of teaching English is concerned, the smallest unit of learning a language is the sentence, not the word, not these letters. The whole sentence that makes sense. So that whole sentence should be learned just when you learn a particular verb or word. That means you sh shouldn't use or you shouldn't learn meanings of words without their sentences. It see just like that. A person went to a shop. He wanted to buy an umbrella and he wanted that his umbrella should last long. So he said to 
to the shopkeeper that will this umbrella last long? The shopkeeper said, you save it from water, rain and sun, it will last long. So if you know many words, their meaning, and you don't know the sentences, you are carrying a bag on a load of carry of what you call your equipment. Now for equipment, I am just making a use of the of a metaphor. Suppose you have a knife, pistol, bullets, all with you, and you don't know how to. Put the bullet, insert the bullet in the gun. You don't know how to take out a knife and uh, defend yourself. So you have all the equipment. But a person who hasn't got anything in his hand, he just slaps you and takes away your gun and ammunition. So what's the use of carrying that uh, gun or ammunition with you. So if you load your mind with different words and their meaning without making sentences, learning them with sentences, they are all lying useless. They go into your passive vocabulary. You just only when you read, you know, you try to understand the meaning, but when you got to speak, you are unable to use them. You have to form them in the part of your active vocabulary. Now, giving an example of active vocabulary, I know, suppose in Hindi, I give an example of water. You call Ambu, Neer, Jal, and we all know the Pariyayavachi words. We have learned them. But we are used to or in a habit of using the word Pani. Suppose I ask you that now onwards don't use the word Pani and say Ambu or Neer or Jal. If you want to want a glass of water, say Mujhe ek gilas Jal de do. And if you happen to say Pani, you will be taxed with a rupee fine. I bet you that I'll get richer and richer because always you will be making mistakes and you'll always be uh, pronouncing the word Pani first. Then when you'll realize, then you'll say Jal. That means Pani has become the part of your active vocabulary. And Ambu, Jal, Neer, they are in your passive vocabulary. So, similarly, when you say these, there are three lists of words, verbs that follow, that are followed by a gerund. Then again, there is a list where the verbs are followed by an infinitive, a gerund, and then both of them. All these verbs, you can get sentences in a usage dictionary. No grammar book gives all the sentences of, with all the verbs. Nor can I tell you. It will go very long. The chapter will go very long. I can just give you some examples. Like for instance, verbs followed by infinitive gerund. Suppose I say expect. Expect. Duncan, uh, Macbeth hoped to succeed Duncan. I hope to succeed this time. Hope. Then, gerund or if, see, this involves, this problem involves lot of Involves, suppose I use verb involves with the gerund. How is it? 
it involves a lot of practicing you know, or practice so similarly you have lists in all the grammar books but see if you use it some words which uh, words which can you can uh, wrongly make and they can make nonsense of it see i wrote a letter to a uh, editor about a book in which there were several mistakes and he asked me he asked the writer of the book of the book to correct it and then a letter come, came to me which said mr chohan i extend you my thanks now what's this the verb pattern says that the verb extend should be followed by a direct object first then an indirect object that means he should have said i extend my thanks to you when he said i extend you my thanks that meant that someone will hold my legs and someone will hold my hands and they'll pull and extend me stretch me uh, you know what will happen uh, is it is it really good english so when you know these three lists you can find anywhere i have to just guide you in this video what you have to do you have to find those words from any of the books use a usage dictionary and then those complete sentences and you can hardly learn two sentences in one of one day that i'm telling you you can learn and appear for examination hundreds of them in one day but you can pick part and parts of your vocabulary only two so it's a long practice you will have to listen such kind of sentences pay attention to the sentences spoken while watching any talk show in the tv or reading also you should pay attention and whenever a sentence strikes you you like the expression you just try to make part and parcel of your personality repeat it again and again and again and again repeating and imitating will train your ears train your mind to produce correct sentences to form correct habit is also very difficult to leave as it is difficult to leave bad habits so why not form correct habits in the beginning only got it so this i have to explain regarding this what you call topic how to use infinitives and gerunds after the verbs so those who have liked the way how i told you this way they can like share or comment thank you very much for watching